This video is going to be on getting empirical formulas from percent composition um, or even just mass values. So when, we're, when we get the empirical formula, that's the most reduced form. Okay, It might also be the molecular formula, the actual formula, but it's always the most reduced ratio of the elements. So let's think about for a minute what these ratios mean. So for water, this is the empirical and the molecular formula for water. Um, remember, this two means there's two atoms of hydrogen for every one atom of oxygen. Or we could say that if we had a mole of these, it would be two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen. What the formula does not mean, remember, is that there's two grams of hydrogen for every one gram of oxygen. Um, there's, really, there'd be, for every two grams of hydrogen, there'd be 16 grams of oxygen. Two moles is two grams for that, that hydrogen is 16 grams. This is oxygen, 16 grams for a mole. So remember that the ratio is not in terms of mass, it's in terms of moles or number of atoms. So the easiest way to do these is going to be get them in moles and figure out what the ratios are for moles. So um, this is, by the way, this is question number five in your notes. Um, I'm going to do A and, A and B right now. So the first problem says you have some red copper oxide. And it tells you that the mass of the red copper oxide is this, the reactant with some hydrogen, and it produces that much copper. Well, if the whole compound was 1.256 and that much copper was made, that means we had 0.14 grams of oxygen. So we're trying to get the formula of this copper oxide. We obviously know it's C or L, we're just trying to figure out what number goes there, and what number goes there. Is it a one-to-one -one ratio? Is it two-to-one? What is it? So we need to change these into moles. Okay, let's get the ratio and we need to change these into moles. So we have 1.116 grams of copper. Um, these are ones I would not round on, so 63.5 grams of copper is a mole. If we do that, that's 0 0.0175 moles. Uh, the 0 0.14 grams of oxygen. 16 grams of a mole of oxygen, so that is 0 0.00875 moles of oxygen. Again, that's not a whole number ratio, so I can't put in this with the copper and this with the oxygen. So to get the ratio, I like see if you know is this number double that, is it triple it, is it a four to three ratio? Just divide by the smaller one. So this is the smaller one, so then divide this by 0 0.00875, and divide this by 0 0.00875. That comes out to be about 2, it comes out to be 1. So the formula then is C2O. So there's twice as many coppers as there are oxygen, so 2 to 1 ratio for the moles. Uh, the second problem there, the letter B says you have a compound that's 66% calcium, 34% phosphorus. You guys can probably get the formula of that since you know how to write formulas, but let's say we don't know what the formula is. So now we have percents, but remember, we can pretend like we have a 10 gram sample of the compound, or a 100 gram sample of the compound, or whatever you want to pretend like you have. All we need to know is what the ratio is. So if we said, oh, we have 100 grams of calcium phosphide, okay, we're trying to figure out what numbers go there. If we have 100 grams of that compound, that means we'd have 66 grams of calcium and 34 grams of phosphorus. Again, we need to turn this into moles, turn that into moles. So divide by the more masses. Um, I'm just going to tell you what that is. 66 divided by 40 is 1.65 moles of calcium. And 34 divided by 31 is 1.0. 97 moles of phosphorus. Well, to get the ratio, that's going to be a kind of tough ratio, divide them by the smaller ones. So I'm going to divide both these by 1.097, divide by 1.097. When I do that, I get about 1.5 and 1. So I obviously can't write CA 1.5. One. So you have to kind of know that a one and a half to one ratio, if I double that and double that, that becomes three, that becomes two. So it's a three to two ratio. So it's CA three to two. 
I will do the next problem on a separate video.